Okay, we're going to uh, work on a couple quick things tonight. We're uh, doing some different uh, things that are going to help you survive a back attack. Rear naked choke from the back. I'm going to cover some things. This is my buddy Josh. He has really long legs, about a 6'4 kind of guy. So we're going to show you some things if they have long legs. And then uh, me and my buddy Travis Adams, we're going to show you some, uh, some other things after that. But instead of going through a whole series of different things or a specific deal, we're just going to hit a a few points that, that are in some of the most common things that people do already. So you should already know, and then just these are some of the most common details in those different things that people m miss. And I wanna hit about just 10 or 12 real common details in the in defenses that people are already doing. Okay, so, and we're gonna, instead of being belly down, we're gonna be up like this just so you guys can see better. And sometimes this occurs. <clears throat> a couple things it's gonna be doing, whether I wanna attack his legs or think, the first thing you gotta do is not get choked out. Trying to lean back way high like this and putting my shoulders up here level with his shoulders, this is the easiest way for him to get the choke and it's the hardest way for me to get the legs, okay? So from right from the beginning, when he takes your back, you're gonna be wanting to try to slide your shoulders down and get your shoulders level with his hip joints so that now when he's choking, it's much easier to defend, okay? So let's say he took, he took my back, like he's got my actual back. And now he's trying to fly me out. If I decide to make that turn to go to there, when I turn here, so I need to turn and already be thinking in my mind that I'm going to sit down and get my shoulders to here versus just going to my belly, okay? Now, the first thing, most people already know, don't cross your ankles. If they do cross their ankles like this, you just stack them opposite, boom, boom, boom. So if he's got his right one on top, I'm going to put my left one on top and then lock it in, and then I make a bridge, and that breaks his ankles. But most people know not to break their ankles. If they know not to break their ankles, put your hand under one and over one and then cross it for them. Because they're not thinking about that. It's a, but when I lift it up, see, when my legs squeeze, that's what makes it go together. I don't try to go like an arm wrestle with the guy. Just put, like they're touching. Push one down, pull one up, and squeeze your legs. That's enough. They've crossed. That's all you got to do is get them on top of each other. They don't have to be like real pretty big. You just need one on top, one on the bottom, and that'll be fine. Tap, tap, see? Tap. So that's what I do. I get the guy here. Now look here. If, if, if I feel like I can't even use my arms, like maybe he's got me up here and I'm trying to defend, like I've got two for one here. So I'm trying to defend this. Just drop one leg lower and one leg higher, you know, and start to squeeze like that. So you're trying to get him to go across, okay? Sometimes you can just do that with just one set. Drop that leg down. And come on, so I can do that with just one hand instead. See, so try to drop, drop, and control. So anyway, so basically, he's here. Now, a lot of times I see this, and this does work most of the time, and that when you're driving your elbow into the shin to kind of get this lock, that people do this right here. And the guy, sometimes they tap, but most of the time they just let go, kick off, and go away. But it's okay because you got out of thing. This is like uh, very kindergarten. This is not how you're supposed to be doing this. When you do that, the goal is not to bust up this girl, this guy's leg and curl it. That's not your thing. The idea is to dr be driving their elbow bone through it like this, and this just holds it in place. The energy is behind this bone, and it's that elbow pushing through it with your body weight. So when you go, you don't want to be on your back. You want to stick your elbow in it. And you want to get him on the floor, and, and you, then you want to be bringing your thigh through the ankle, not bicep curling it. It's your thigh coming up. That's what's breaking, okay? Now, if I get in that situation, try to get your knee right here on the heel so that, so that you can break it like, like that with a toe hold, okay? So the guy has it. He's attacking. Your goal is to fall down, be working here, and then working here, Okay? So that's the best way to do that leg break, okay? Sometimes this guy is so long-legged, he's going to get you in a body triangle, okay? You really don't want to fall so that the body triangle is up. This is going to be harder for me to deal with. I'm actually going to try to fall with it down, like here, okay? Once it gets here, go ahead, go ahead and keep that locked, okay? A lot of times what I'll do is help him by pulling that up for him. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock this in place. Once I lock it in place, I hold this, push my elbow here. Now I bridge my hip joint through this tip of the elbow, pulling his toe this way, and then it breaks this ankle here. Okay, so 
He was working to get the body triangle. I'm going to actually pull it and stitch it for him, lock it in place. This is here. And then when I bridge, I turn my body like this. I don't want pressure on this side. I want to turn like I'm trying to take this hip to the ceiling. And so this one, see, like I'm twisting. And at the same time, I don't want this up here on my ribs. I want to push that down, okay? Sometimes you get caught. He's got the body triangle, okay? Like this. When you go, you can grab your own short, stick your elbow in there, and then when you drive that down, a lot of times you'll get that to where you can even make him release. See, as I set down into it, as I slide my hip, once I feel like I got a good grip, that sliding of that elbow, not the downward pressure, not the bicep curl, but lock that in and then hip scoop. So he'll have it here. I'll get this. Yeah, good. See, I feel it bite right there. Once I feel it bite, see that? I just scoot through. Now you can now you can lock that into place, and now I can go ahead and attack attack from here. Okay, so it look like this. He's got the body triangle. Pull my short up, dig that bone in there, hand it to it. Weights here so the knee can't go anywhere, and then scoot down. Boom. Let's go ahead and trap, and then attack here. Okay. Now, good. So. Thanks for that on the those few tips on legs. So many more things you can do on the legs, guys, but those are just some common things I see that people don't think about or don't go, and they're like, oh, well, he didn't cross his legs. We'll cross them for him. Or they're trying to bicep curl and not getting their weight there, and they're not understanding. And I could show a million more leg lock attacks on that, but that's kind of the basic stuff. So now let me show Travis here. We talked about this the other night a little bit. Come around, he's got my back. Let me, actually, I'm like, you, you lady, let me get you up here first. I'm going to attack you back for a second. Just sit, sit down so the camera can see you. Just sit on your butt and relax. Okay. Everybody knows. I'm going for the check, the choke, and he wants to get two for one. Okay. This is very common. Everybody does this, but they're not really doing it exactly right. Um, and I'm going to show you, first of all, I'm going to slip in a little extra for you to show you why that uh, just two for one is not good enough. We had a guy fighting at a highest end tournament in North Carolina that came from California from my coach Goldfors gym. And I happened to be helping him on the mat at that time. And they've got, you do, you know, like three minutes and then uh, there's no points. And then you come back and you can talk to your corner for a minute. And then you go back out there in the second round's points. And if nobody wins and uh, then you go to an overtime and there's still whoever gets the takedown wins. So he has this guy's back for like a minute and a half of the last of the first round but there's no points in the first round, so you have to get a submission. But the guy's going for two for one, and, he, and he's defending very well. And so I gave him this little tip. When the guy does this, if you get his back and you get here, and he goes two for one, make this adjustment, and you'll be able to submit the guy. The same thing, the guy did the same defense, and our guy choked him out in like, uh, you know, 10 seconds after he got it. So here's what he did. So I had my elbow like this. I was going for it. He goes for two for one. He's got your arm down here. When he does, just roll your wrist down. Go to here and bounce this over in this position. Now when I curl up, now he's in a choke here. Okay, see? So if he goes, so if I'm here and I'm trying to get like my elbow, hang on, my elbow's lined up with his chin, and he goes two for one, let that slip so that your wrist is in here nice and deep. Don't grab your bicep, grab your forearm, and then just curl it in like like this. Like I don't go like this because he's holding it down. Go like this, like here. And that's gonna make the see here. So he's holding it, and I just go here, and that makes it choke, okay? So that's that's the, that's one reason why you don't want to do just two for one. Good to do for one, two for one, you should do two for one, but then you need to do more with it. So what you're going to do here, he's attacking my back. Just go ahead and just get your hooks in and everything. He's got, got his hooks in. Again, I want to be trying to settle down and get my shoulders more around his hips so I can kind of defend here for a minute, okay? Now, open your arms so they can see I'm going to put this hand like under my armpit here. I'm going to bring this hand behind my back, and I'm going to be bringing my chin in like this. So I'm kind of defending my back and making this more difficult for him to go. So he's trying to get that choke in there, and I'm trying to defend that. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to make, make a little space here, see right here. And then when his hand comes through to attack my chin, so I'm defending on that. There, there, see that? When that hand comes through, I'm going to actually let that get through. I'm going to catch that glove, this hand here. I'm going to catch it. Now I'm going to lift it. And see when I extend that arm comes here. Now I've got two for one. 
but it's on the other side, and I want to come down in this position here. Now I can either try to attack from the arm bar, like from here. I can, can pull, hold this here and pull the elbow down, and that gets the shoulder. It's very important. Don't worry about pushing this up. Hold this to your body and put take your ear and your hand and bend the elbow down. That's how you get the shoulder line, okay? And these are things that are going to make him want to unhook. So sometimes you can actually squeeze that hook so that he can't go, and you can get that shoulder lock in. But if not, then you're going to try to make go ahead and make your pass. Get control. You can come around here, and now we can attack our dars or whatever you want to do off this control here. So when you get two for one, however it is that you ended up getting two for one, your goal is to let your shoulders and your delts get up and get that hand to the opposite side so that now when he's trying to choke, that it's very difficult to get the other hand across too instead of having to go back and forth. Get that on there. So as soon as, as, soon as we get two for one, instead of just going, okay, I got two for one, I'm going to hold on and relax here. And he starts working all this stuff over here. When he gets two for one, boom, work here. And work on getting it down to the side. And then try to work on, on defending. Like I said, even if you don't do anything but escape and come around and attack here, you know, maybe working for, working for your darses or something here, that's fine. But make every effort to get it on the other side. Some other little details. A lot of people don't know or care or think it makes a difference, but it does. If he has the rear naked choke, put the rear naked choke on, but don't squeeze hard. If I fall stem side down, for example, I kind of lock it all into place, and it's going to be much harder for me to turn into him and, and make this happen here, okay? So I really don't want to fall with the stem side down. So if you do have to be there and you've got in that position, you're going to want to fall stem side up and control it, push on that elbow, try to get your shoulders between you and him, make that space and make it break and come out. So we want to go as we're spinning and looking into the choke that the stem side is up and available. Okay, so it should look like this. He's attacking. Okay, I'm scooting down. Boom, there's two for one. Boom, I'm attacking here. <laughs> and I'll work into this one here, okay? All right, so those are a couple little details that we're kind of speeding through but to help out. Um, Another thing too, sometimes, uh, lay on your side here. Sometimes maybe I ended up with a head arm like this right here and people were always going, oh, well, I'm gonna get my leg over here and take his back and attack his back. So they bring their leg over here and then he ends up, he pops out, attacks my back and he gets me in the choke or however he's gonna do, okay? So you should get the underhook on the other arm, but for some reason you ended up in his position, and he, and he controls your leg. Okay, so he, got, he gets that hook in. I'm gonna step back, see how he's got that, that locked in there? When he does, I'm gonna put, go ahead and lock it in. He's got that figure four lock. I'm in jeopardy here of him taking my back. So I'm gonna take my foot, put my foot in front of his foot. I put my hip here, and when I bridge, it breaks his ankle. Okay, just like that right there. Okay, so we're gonna be here. He tries, to, he tries to get his leg over. Come on, I kick it, defend it, defend it. But he maybe pulls me backwards, and then I have to step, and then he gets it. I step back, I let him get his figure four locked the way he likes it, bring it back in front, goes here, then I bridge this way, and go ahead and it'll either break his ankle or break free, and I can make this escape. Another cool thing about that is that I like to do, sometimes I even bait the guy into this. If the guy's got a really good back game, then obviously don't bait him into anything, but you know, if he's just average and you understand this. So I'll give him that. He'll lock that in. Now, see, when I lift that up, you can just turn. And then I'll, when I make the rotation, and I'll put him right into the knee bar on that one right there. Sometimes I can do it when he's here. And my leg's up. He's take, trying to take my back, and I'm defending. Yeah, I'll just rotate my head down here, and then I can bring my arm even to the sub. See, now I can just catch that one. See an attack hit. Bring it in and attack here. Attack here. I feel like it. Okay, so we can attack either leg with the knee bar. 